You are listening to the Gritty Podcast, where we talk about all things gritty. All right, folks, welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I am your host, Brian Call. I've got my co-host, Brad Hunt, beside me. Today's podcast is again with our friend, Bo Beatty. And on this episode, we talk about a really sweet wall tent yeah. that he engineered, designed, and Which came up with. Normally, we wouldn't be talking about, no. but after spending some time around it and in it, like, yep, dude, it's, it's, it's a very unique shelter. Yeah, it fits a niche that hasn't been filled, in my opinion. Yeah, a lot well, of absolutely. you uh, llama type folks, or mule, or pack goat, you might consider this option. And I would say car campers too. If you're car- hunting from That's a what car, I was say next is side by side car camping. <laughs> yeah, we're looking at grabbing it for some of our hunts u- using the side by side. But basically, what it is, it's a wall tent. Yep, but. It's only like twenty five pounds, yeah. Instead of forty or fifty, right? So for the small one, which I believe is like a nine, a nine and a half by nine and a half, fits inside of a five gallon bucket with all the stakes, pole system, everything. You need to listen to this podcast. Yep. It's gonna, it's gonna blow your mind. It's, it's a, it's a sweet shelter. I used it this year with Livesey. Mm-hmm. I was totally skeptical, poo pooed it, and then I used it, <laughs> set it up, took it down, slept in it. Uh. It has its place. I'm telling you, it has yes. its place. I think um, I'm going to see myself using it quite a bit over the next few years for sure. There's a place for backpacking and teepees, like Seek Outside and the Peaks, the new Peaks teepee that's mm-hmm. coming out, the Solitude. These are great shelters, and we'll, we'll be using those when we're on our feet. Yeah, packing I'm not in. packing 25 dollars. But 25 I'm telling you, pack, when we got llamas and we're on certain hunts, I'm bringing the wall tent on these, especially these late season Absolutely. ones. Absolutely. You and I have some late season bow hunts planned for next year. They're colder than hell, and we get in pretty far, <laughs> but we do it through a side by side with tracks or a snow machine. Yep. We're going to pop up this 25 pound wall tent, and it's every bit of wall tent. Yeah. And yet, only weighs 25 pounds way easier to set up you got to check out the video mm-hmm. listen to the show figure out how this came to be yeah it's a killer product folks so check it out and uh we made a deal with bo live on air when we were podcasting <laughs> yes. hey to, hey bo give us a coupon code for this so we got one mm-hmm. so you're gonna save 100, 100 bucks, bucks yep. when you use the code gritty if you want one of these shelters so that's cool and uh i hope you guys enjoy the show before we get into that check out the water bottles we got yep. this is chartreuse that's clear. what we're calling it. That's clear. These are Nalgene bottles with the mm-hmm. cap cap. They're at the grittystore.com right now. My sister Katie brought these back. Like I said before, we don't use these as much as we do these GSI Microlite water bottles, which I love. Yep. But there is a place for these. I got to tell you, I do enjoy the lightweight. I like the cap cap bottle for when mm-hmm. you're bouncing down the bouncing road. Bouncing down the road. <laughs> uh, even today, I had this bottle in the truck in my truck and there's snow and I had to four wheel drive a bunch and I tried to drink on the road and it just went all over me. And I was like, I wish GSI would come up with a compatible lid for this because it is annoying that I got to pretty much stop Uh, the car to have a drink or be very careful. Like just, um, but yeah, it's a great bottle. Mm -hmm. Um, we've used these a lot in the past and some of you people are like, you're nuts carrying a metal bottle. Uh, when you could carry some of these. And so here you go. Here you go. You got an algae bottle that's lightweight. Yep. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoy this podcast on llamas. And uh, maybe consider giving Bo a call yep. and uh, renting a llama and uh, renting the shelter. Tent because yeah. you can rent this shelter as part of your uh, part of your rental and it's pretty cheap. Yep. So you're going to enjoy this show. If you love hunting out west and in the backcountry, you're going to like it. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Stay greedy. All right, folks, welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I am your host, Brian Call. I'm joined by my co-host, Brad Hunt. Yep. And we're here with Mark Livesey from Treeline Academy, Treeline Pursuits, and Bo Beatty with Wilderness Ridge Trail Llamas. Oh, he's, he's Wordle. Get, he's getting better. Wordle. Wordle. Yes. And uh, today, we're going to talk about a shelter that you have developed. It's a, well, it's a wall tent. Mm-hmm. Now, I was highly skeptical of your wall tent. I got a little story for you. I went out hunting with Mark, and we pack in with llamas. And Brad and I are with him, and we brought our Peaks teepee, yep. stove, and all that. 
So we start setting up, and Mark starts. He pulls out of his. Ge- well, and to us, we are living in luxury with yeah, the they, stove, they, and, stove telling, and the oh, teepee. Like, oh, we got the new peaks, which is dang nice. Teepee, <laughs> let's just be honest. We got our stove. We're going to be living. Like, yeah, I didn't say anything. Right? I'm like, okay, what's good? <laughs> Eli, Eli, we, I Eli and Mark. Me and Eli. They start. Come. They pull a literal. They pull a canvas wall tent out yeah. of the out of the pack bags with the llamas and. I my respect for Mark went from here down to here like it was never here right away total judgment I was like seriously like a wall tent a wall tent like give these llamas a break this is not something that you just put this is so animal much cruelty weight. and he was, for he was your telling comfort. us he was telling us guys we need to we need to like limit what we are packing. Yeah, exactly. You might, you might have to pack That's some other of stuff thing. on your backpack. <laughs> I, I, I climbed that hill with a little more load than I thought I should be with all these llamas, yeah. only to have Mark pull out a freaking wall <laughs> tent from his saddlebags. So uh, we get up there, and, and I watched the tent go up, and I had some um, – I judged it. I judged it right away. I didn't even give it a chance. I didn't even look who made it. I just looked at it and was like – yeah, I don't get it. Like, yeah. why would a guy do that when you could just pack an efficient teepee? It doesn't weigh very much. You got the yeah. lightweight stove. And I assumed that uh, it was too many cubic inches to heat up with that little stove because you were running the same Seek Outside same. SXL stove that we were running. Same and stove I thought, I'm running all my teepees. And I'm thinking, man, I got to run this stove in my teepee, you know, to keep it nice and cozy when it's zero degree temps. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that tent's just too big. Not really taking into account that it's canvas and how much more efficient canvas is than sil nylon. So I'm sitting there and the hunt goes by day after day and I peek in a little bit here and there. Uh, Mark has it lit up like with stadium lighting inside. <laughs> like it looks like like so uh. lit. It's brighter than bright, which was obnoxious. <laughs> like, but I did start to develop t- uh, hey, it was pretty nice when I left the lights on. When we were you know what I felt camp. like? You're like, oh, there's our camp. We can see our team. You know I, I couldn't like? tell the difference between that and the city lights right. way down this below. This is what I would say. Is this is what I felt like. Every time we're laying there sleeping was like on Christmas vacation when the neighbors were laying there and he plugs in his lights. So <laughs> it lights up. That's what I felt like. Yeah. So I sit there, and but I did My get life. a little bit of shelter envy when I popped in there a couple times. I'm like, well, this is warmer mm-hmm. than I thought. Um. And Mark is standing up, hanging out, hopping on one leg, trying to get his pants on. And I'm like, yeah, I can't really do that in a teepee. Yeah. Okay. You know, that's kind of nice. But again, I just assumed this is luxury, too much weight, unpractical. Yeah. Mark's gone soft. So then we... (laughs) Which is true. (laughs) We fast forward like another week or so. We kill a buck. Eli shoots his first buck. It's awesome, huh? It's late at night. And we decide we're going to... Well, we got to find some place to stay. We were headed to a new camping spot. We were both so tired. We ended up pulling over and camping in a parking lot somewhere. And at first, we're going to sleep in the truck because we're just too tired. But then we're like, we won't sleep well. It'll... And then and Mark's like, we can just set up that wall tent, you know? And I'm thinking, dude, I am not going to take an hour to set up a wall tent or whatever. Yeah. But then he's like, no, nah, it goes up quick, you know? And, I, and you mentioned it did go up faster than our Peaks TP did. Yeah. So yeah. you and I set it up in the parking lot. We threw a little buddy heater in there. I threw my Helix cot in there. Helinox? Helix? And you're telling whatever me I've gone soft. We lay down, and I'm like, it's warm, cozy. It bucks the wind. It's tall. It's spacious. All of a sudden, I'm like, hey, Mark, where'd you get this? Yeah. Who, who made it? And uh, he tells me you. And he's like, you know, it says like Wilderness Trail. Uh, wilderness ridge trail llamas out there somewhere and i'm like it does and uh so next thing you know i'm I'm like a believer so i want to talk to you about the shelter i want to get some of your insights uh in in on it i i can say right off the bat what 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 got my attention was it's not the weight of a standard wall tent right it's a lot lighter so it seems like you took all the benefits of a big wall tent and took away all those negative downsides to a wall yeah. tent. And I would yeah. say the setup too, because you know cool. my past experiences at Elk Camp is setting up a wall tent is it's a lot of work and you have a lot of stakes. And the way you've designed it, you know you have one stake on each side of the wall of the mm-hmm. wall tent. Yep. And I mean, and look, I'm never going to put that in my backpack, <laughs> right? And hike it in, but. 
when you're dealing with llamas, llamas or car camping, car camping, right. horses, Camp- any kind of packing, right? I'll throw that thing in my side by side. Oh yeah, and absolutely. I'll just roll with that. Absolutely. I can think of some hunts we do mm-hmm. where I'm like, this is perfect. We usually bring our teepee because that's what we have. You have like yep. an eight man seek outside. We've thrown up some big teepees, but looking at your tent, no way. I'd r- rather run that. And there's a couple of reasons why. One of the chief reasons when it's zero degrees outside, yep. well, when it's just below freezing, you're sleeping in that tent, you got condensation, your breath, yeah. it goes in the air, it hits the side walls, it freezes. You have a mm-hmm. layer of ice. It's kind of unavoidable. The only way to avoid it would be to vent it extre- a lot. Right. Two by- ways. Vent it a ton or continually run the stove hot all the time, all night. And even then, you're still going to have a certain portion, body height or or below, that's going to stay right. condensation. It's, it's a lot of work, and you have to have a lot of wood to keep it going mm-hmm. all yep. night. And someone has to wake up to do that. Right. And we just don't. Yeah. Usually, it's a wood gathering issue. Yep. And so, we'll crash. When we wake up, there's a layer of ice on everything, and it rains in there like the Amazon jungle <laughs> for about 10 minutes yep. to 15 minutes in the morning. And then it's it all literally, dry. It rains. It rains. It like <laughs> just coming down hard in your face. You, you tuck in. You wait for the yep. storm to pass. Your bag gets wet on the yeah, outer. It gets soaked. Yep. And then within 10 minutes or 20 minutes, it dries out because we get, we get that. We turn the pipe red like yeah. in that, in that stove. Yep. So... We get it hot, we dry out, but in the canvas, it doesn't sweat like that. Right. It doesn't have that kind of condensation. And then when you run the stove, the stove is more efficient because the R value, it traps a lot more heat in than the still nylon does. Yep. So I can already tell, plus you can stand up in it, it's roomy, and the ease of setup is smooth. So all these factors combine to say, okay, this is more ideal for these other situations, I'd rather leave my teepee tucked away for when I'm actually on my feet backpacking and I'd rather run this. Yep. So what, what was it that prompted you, you know, what, what was the problem you were trying to solve when you came out with this? Cause <clears throat> there's a lot of tents you could already just get. There is a lot. Why, what, 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 why did you decide you had to make your own? Yeah. Well, that's a, a great question. And I, I really like to talk about it and it's kind of a long, uh, trajectory of how I actually ended up to where we're at. And it was about eight years ago when we started, you know, guiding a lot of summer trips and where we take people into the back country, you know, hiking, camping, mm-hmm. fishing, and we provide the transportation, their backpacks, their sleeping bags, their tents, their sleeping pads and all their food in a guide. And we started to go through a lot of different tents and we started to also hunt a lot more. Yeah, you know, and used llamas and tested llamas, and I was building all this gear and equipment and that we have here in the in the rental shop. And I just started realizing after spending so many days in the backcountry by using Seek and Kafaru tents, and um, <clears throat> you know, like Hilleberg and Kelty, Kelty, and you know, I used every wall tent known to man and every sheep herder style tent and A frame style tents, and I used. I have this massive tent collection today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't believe, like, I own over 30 different tents personally. They're a different brand, different manufacturer, different style. And I also, there's a couple tent companies that started and uh, went out of business in the last 10 years that I bought their tent and thought they were onto something. And for one reason or another, they fail or they didn't fit all of my needs. They had mm-hmm. one single purpose for truck camping or they were really good for ultralight, you know, teepee style mm-hmm. camping. But if it was four season and I was really worried about the weather, or condensation or rain, I, I wouldn't want to go with that tent. And I had a couple tents collapse on me and heavy snow loads. And so I realized it's like, there's not really one tent fits all. I realized that that time is like, if you really want to be a backcountry enthusiast, you're going to have maybe four or five different tents mm-hmm. if you, if you camp year round. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, this just seems cumbersome and there's got to be a different way. And also, as I started llama packing and I had better and stronger llamas and I built better and more capable um, pack panniers and saddles, I realized that there wasn't anything that really fit well while packing on the llamas. Mm -hmm. And if it did, it took too long to set up or was took two llamas to pack in a camp setup. And so um, I decided that we needed to try something else. And so about seven years ago, I sewed my first tent and... 
me and a guy named Darren Austin are the only two people on earth that have ever seen it. <laughs> and it's a horrible rendition of a circus tent. <laughs> and um, I sold two more. You said you were ashamed? Very ashamed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was it was so embarrassing. Oh, you're not going to believe this. Like, I got it all s- done. Uh-huh. And me and Darren are cr- cracking this thing out, whipping it out, like looking at it. And it was so bad, which is like the first throw of the tent. I was like, I'm not even going to put the poles up. <laughs> And I, I've never to this day seen it set up. Now, Darren set it up and has made it work. And so I ended up with two more additions after that in the same year. And I got closer to what I was looking for. And and then I got really sick there for a while with cancer. Mm-hmm. And when I got back on my feet, I was like, you know what? I need to revive this project. In fact, I still own a domain name on GoDaddy called Some Dude's Tent. <laughs> <laughs> and that was going to be my tent company. And the logo was a guy in fishing waders with his waders pulled down below his knees, taking a whiz. <laughs> I don't know. I was I was high on something, man. So some dude's tent with a guy, you know, fishing with his waders down. And so that was my tent concept and started eight years ago. That was, I like the branding that went along with <laughs> yeah, it. That's, yeah. <laughs> That's all I had. I had a circus tent with a guy in waders peeing and uh, a, a brand name. Pissing so. on everybody else's <laughs> tent. <there. Yeah. laughs> so that's kind of where it all started. But I was really trying to fill a need between heavy wall tents yeah, and the ultralight backpacker um, silt nylon style tents, whether it was mm-hmm. a teepee or like a sawtooth style. And something that you would – a, a single tent – that a backcountry enthusiast, regardless if you're hunting, camping, fishing, or, you know, winter expedition, they would fit more needs than any other tent out there. That was my goal. Mm-hmm. They could go with horse packing, llama packing, goat packing. They could go um, backpacking with two, you know, if you really needed it to. Right. And it was great for car camping or someone that was going to use a four-wheeler or side-by-side. Because when you start looking at the scope of where people uh, explore the North America, it's extreme. Mm-hmm. I mean, the people... You know, taking those Igers up in, you know, Alaska and Canada and people that are using boats exclusively for their access and canoes and just, you know, there's everything underneath the sun. I was like, there's got to be something that's more packable, that's breathable, that allows you to stand up um, inside of it. And then when it's pitched really tight, that handles the wind, it doesn't have wind flap, all these things. I started Mm -hmm. breaking it all down. This is what I needed to do. Can handle heavy snow load, can be set up by one person very quickly. And has an internal frame that's lightweight that you don't have to use poles, but you can use poles. You know, it has to be somewhat modular, has a floor that comes in and comes out. So I started writing a checklist. What does it have to have? Well, and and you're, to kind of put it in perspective too, you run a big guide service, right? Right. So what does that guide service entail? You know, for us, I mean, we operate. You said 9,000. We do about 9,000 people a year. And it's everything from. But you take camping. That we take camping. Everything from like a 30-minute. Llama introduction. I can't even imagine. All no. the way to, you know, 10, 11, 12 day trips in the thoroughfare, you know, in Yellowstone. Um, and we operate from Yellowstone all the way down to Southern Utah, and then we skip over and go into Colorado into Rocky Mountain National Park. So we see a lot of different terrain. We see a lot of different weather patterns. That's a lot of tents. It's a lot of tents. <laughs> And what we've seen is a lot of failure, it's right? Not bad so how, ma- how, many Seriously. Tents, how many tents do you have in the field at a time usually? You know, at the peak of the season, we'll be running three to 400 tents at one time. Hmm. And that means that we have half that many getting ready to go. And then we have a bunch of tents in an, in an, in warranty issues and claims. And so you're talking four or five, 550 tents, something like that. Yeah, rolling. So yep. we figure over the years of guiding, we've owned, bought, sold, and traded over 5,000 tents. Jeez. And uh, and a lot of those are, you know, mostly two and three season backpacking style tents. Mm-hmm. And I mean, just looking at construction and looking at what, how the tents break, you know, your shelter can make or break a trip. But if you go out a lot or take people out a lot as a guide or an outfitter, you realize that like morale is in, imperative. Yeah. Oh yeah. And we needed to find a tent that was a little more affordable and that worked in our Southern Utah operations. But I also wanted it for my selfish needs for hunting. And so finding something that was pannier packable was really important. And so I came up, I finally had my blueprints of what I wanted to do. And I started taking it to these tent manufacturers that I had good relationships with. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the big names like wouldn't even put me in contact with the right person. And a couple of the smaller, more local operations, they would talk to me and we kicked around a tent concept with one of them. And I gave them my idea and they sewed up a tent and they gave it to me. I'm like, that's like, I asked, I asked for a burger and you gave me a pizza, you know, like <laughs> it was not even close. 
Really? And they ended up bringing that tent, um, that concept. They brought it brought it to life and actually are selling it. And it was just uh, way off the mark for me. And I finally uh, teamed up with Snow Trekker a couple years ago um, out of Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And uh, they are focused on winter camping. And I talked to them. They heard my idea. They looked at the concept. And then we went to the drawing board and together put together a, a three – part series of tents. We call it the Divide Series Tents, made by Wilderness Ridge Trail Llamas and Snow Tracker. And uh, the only place that you can buy these right now is through me. Mm-hmm. And we developed this tent, tested it, tore it to pieces, broke it up, tested it. And then once we felt like it was ready to rock and roll, we actually sent a bunch of these tents to industry professionals that were going to use them more than just in the fall. So it's important that they tested it in all four seasons. Heavy rains, you know, yeah. and you high talk UV. Like Southern Utah, you know, yeah, you get those. Yeah, he didn't send one to me. <laughs> yeah. So I yeah. must not be an industry needs, professional. You're kind of a soft <laughs> yeah. option, yeah. you know. I got, needed, the, I, needed got like someone, round, I got like the round four. I feel like he needed some <laughs> someone more gritty. Yeah. He, did, he, did. <laughs> he, did. he says, that guy doesn't, he doesn't go near hard enough for this guy. <laughs> well, Mark likes me too much, so I knew he wasn't going to be super honest. Mark, yeah. <laughs> Mark actually got the second run after we had sent it out to everyone. They said, hey, we want to make these these Mm -hmm. pieces stronger and so um we are at the point now where we you know nothing's ever perfect but we are very very happy with where it's at and it's been in almost every state in the west now Mm -hmm. or sorry in the the lower 48 it's been in alaska and canada it's been in the the yukon and uh and the, the what people are saying about the tent is what we thought it was, uh-huh. but it doesn't matter what we think. It only matters what people that are testing it, using it, yeah. will we'll, believe. Well, sell it to me. Tell me. Tell me why Sure. Why that and not some other option out there. Yeah. So Why your tent? This is my honest opinion. I think if someone's going to spend a severe or just a lot of time in North America exploring the backcountry, and they're going to use different modes of travel, they're going to end up having – two, maybe three tents in their arsenal that they're going to use. Mm-hmm. And I believe this tent, the Divide Series tent by Wilderness Ridge Trail Llamas and Snow Trekker, is going to be the first tent that they should purchase. And then they should build around that, you know. And that, like I said, I think the Silt Nylon tent is number two that they should be mm-hmm. um, taking on. And the reason is is because our tents are a seven-ounce canvas, okay, and they have vertical sidewalls. Mm-hmm. And so the tent is the smallest one we have is a nine and a half by nine and a half footprint. That's the so one I have. That's the one you have. So it's very square, has 34 inch sidewalls. And what's cool about the sidewalls is the sidewalls actually have um, a rod mm-hmm. that goes through the side mm-hmm. and then has a vertical stay. So the walls are supported, you know, horizontally and vertically. Right. And what allows, what happens is it allows the, the walls to be pitched out extremely tight. When you do that, you have a strong structure, and they're all A-frame style. And then you have no wind flap, right? And then the rain and the snow fall off of the tent very, very quickly. And when you do that, um, because basically the, the, the weave of the tent is so tight that it holds in um, heat really, really well, but also is still a breathable um, natural fiber. So you get all the benefits of having a natural fiber by using canvas, you have um, the heat retention and the R value of the canvas, but you have the lightweight factor that you don't get with natural um, normal canvas tents because it's half the size of most tents and mm-hmm. the and the fabric thickness. Yeah, why don't why don't I mean that seems like an obvious move. Why don't other wall tent manufacturers do that already? You know, and the, I think a couple of the things is it's innovation and the ability to be able to sew the fabric itself and develop the fabric and have it put through a sun forger um, type treatment. Mm-hmm. It's the thinnest that you can basically go and still get through most mills, most um, sewing um, okay. facilities, mm-hmm. and also run through the sun forger process. And so you take it to the to the breaking point of what you know currently technology can do, mm-hmm. and it's a proprietary um, canvas and design. And so that's just basically what sets you apart, okay. you know, is having that. But then um, Dwayne at, at Snow Trekker, he's a, he's a brilliant engineer and designer. And when I brought this idea to him, they already had a couple things in place. 
um, fabrication wise that were really expensive to do. And it's part of the, the molding and the unions. If we have these S clamp or the C clamps that go on the sidewalls that pull the tent out and mm -hmm. also on the rear wall and in the front. And then there's these, um, plastic, um, polymer unions that hold the frame together. And so the whole frame weighs only six pounds and breaks down to 22 inches. So the whole tent itself can fit in a five gallon square bucket, tents, poles, stakes, and floor. Five gallon square bucket. Five wow. gallon a square bucket. And the, the whole tent frame breaks down to 22 inches and only weighs six and a half pounds. So the nine and a half by nine and a half tent with the tent, the floor, which comes in, you know, you can take it out or, or not. You can mm -hmm. leave it in. It's modular that way. Um, the stakes and the canvas itself is 26 and a half pounds. And so it's not an ultralight tent, but it's not a full weight canvas tent either. Yeah. And it's got plenty of headroom. So if, you know, seven foot person can still stand up in there and change and it's breathable, it's pitched really tight, handles up to 70 mile per hour winds, which for me is huge. When you look at a nylon tent and you have the wind flap, it can be hard to sleep at night. Yeah. That was one of the mm -hmm. things like, look, if you set up this tent and pitch it so tight that you have no wind flap, then you also have to have, when it rains, your mm -hmm. stakes can't let up because it's pitched so tight. And that was important to me. And mm -hmm. I've had a silk nylon tent cave in on me on one side because you set up in dry ground and you're pitching it really tight. And then it rains and then half of the stakes come undone and then your tent flops over on you. Yeah. So like all these things, but I also had a, a good A-frame tent <clears throat> that didn't have a strong enough poles cave in when snow load. Mm -hmm. We had a tent set up here for 18 months. And went through two winters, all summer long, um, all fall. And the only thing that we had happen to it, and we never took it down and never re we stretched it, is that one of our clamps, um, the molding, it got up to 120 degrees because of the sun and the way that it was hitting it. it uh, the polymer um, came undone. And so we tightened up the resin on the polymer and got the... Uh, and, and fixed it, you know. Right. So Wow. So this is the version you got right now. You kept that thing up for 18 months? 18 months, yep. And we want to... In see, this? In this, in, in, at my house here at the ranch. Right now, it, right now it's minus seven, with minus the, eight. Uh, with the wind farm right behind <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, you got a wind farm there yeah. with all the little yeah. turbine things. If anybody knows Rigby, Idaho, you know it's cold and windy. Yeah. So Eastern Idaho is right. known for that. And our goal, I mean, we just like, okay... Well, well, okay. everything's going to fail at some point. Uh -huh. We want to know at what point it fails and what fails first and the order in which it fails. Mm -hmm. And so we basically took everything to its limit and found out where it's going to fail first, fixed it. And we did that. We did that over basically the last three years. And uh, where we're at now is basically we got a three-year warranty on the tent. Uh, we've had one warranty claim that was a silly uh, fire burn <laughs> that they burned it but uh, we have three sizes we have the nine and a half by nine and a half tent which weighs 26 and a half pounds and that's the full package when you get it that's exactly what it's stakes, going to weigh. frame Stake, frame pole canvas and yeah. um, they've been on the market but been that able... doesn't include rope lighting yeah it doesn't include rope lighting <laughs> if you were to compare that to another like similar uh, alternative wall tent what's the difference um, basically the difference is you know the ease of use, the packability, how, how how simple and how small it packs down, mm -hmm. how quick it is to set up. And then the next closest model out there in the world is 12 pounds, um, and that's fabric compared to the tent. That's mm -hmm. not the full package. So the next one of this similar size is 40 pounds, full package. That's what I expected. And I was going to say, like, we always used to set up like a 10 by 10, basically, nine yeah. and a half and a half, something like that. 40, 50 pounds. And it was 40, 50 pounds, and almost. If, and you can set this tent up with almost half. Half. Yep. The weight. It's, I mean, it's extremely lightweight, and it's easy to pack down. That's a lot of, of – so, Mark, you know – sorry to interrupt, but, but Mark, now that you, you've had it, you've used it this season – what is your uh, quick and dirty take? Because it's 26 pounds, and your llamas carry how much? Well, like Bo said, Bo's llamas carry about 80. I'm kind of big. I'm kind of more uh, yeah, conservative you, on my llamas. You're I try soft. To about 70. <laughs> <laughs> um, but here's the thing I'm going to say. Those llamas this. aren't gritty. So I'm kind of – there's a couple of things I'm kind of a gear nerd with, right? Yeah. Tens is one of them. I, I don't have 300, but I have <laughs> my wife, two things she complains about. I got an entire room of boots, and I got a yeah, you, whole rack of You tents. got a boot fetish. Yeah, I have a boot fetish, <laughs> and I have uh, a tent fetish. So here's the problem with backcountry tents. And you guys are probably, 
is wind. Mm-hmm. Every tent is good. When everything is good. Right. Yeah. It's, like, right? it's like a backpack, Mark. It's like when you, we were talking about backpacks <laughs> earlier. When you're yeah. carrying around 30 pounds, every backpack is yeah. good. Even my Batman. You don't, need, you don't need a tent <laughs> until you need a tent. Yeah. So what I was running into with, so I like to run the eight man. I, you know, I like a big livable operation. Eight man TP with one guy and, so, a, and a llama in there. <laughs> yeah. And that thing can't handle the wind. No. My... And you know, I'm not here to say anything bad about anybody, but I had that's an eight multiple man. eight man tents that have had zipper, zipper after zipper. Well, and after another zipper. thing too is we ran into this when you're in freezing cold temperatures, but then you throw on top a 40, 50 mile an hour wind. How many times did we have to crawl out of that TV to restake, to restake right. it and because yeah. because of the train we're in? Yeah, my, you know, sandstone I, and let's let's clarify that. Let's unpack that a little bit. I mean, I've been in nasty wind like that mm-hmm. with a two man or three man, like a, we haven't had the like issues. a Cimarron or a Peak Solitude size teepee. Yep, those, especially the peaks with the trekking poles built into the frame, those can take the wind. We, oh yeah, we put those on ridges that right. they should never have been on. But we've had but to when you, take precaution to make sure we stake it out like correctly, rock it, even out. sometimes rock it out or yeah. stack logs around right. it. Which we do. We build like a little log cabin about two feet, three feet tall around the base. Yeah. And we're taking on like 40, 50, 60, 70 mile an hour winds before. But it's handled it but fine. But it's handled it. But when you do eight man, I, I mean, when you get no to way. that peak and that height and the design, it mm-hmm. just is not a wind proof. It's I just mean, too much. You literally uh, have a wind sail. It's a sail. Pretty much. Right. And, out there. and so they just are not, they just can't Your handle it. Your problem is you wanted a teepee the size of a small house and then... <laughs> Then you complain because it can't handle the wind. <laughs> so, okay. One is the weather. Yeah. Two is the condensation. Mm-hmm. And um, and then the heat. Yeah. So I found that in the teepees, right, you got to really stack the wood in there. You got to really get it going on an eight man. You need a big and stove. You, you need like the big rolling, mama. Right? Yeah. We ran the big mama with the eight man and uh, – and you're burning some serious wood. Like the SL, I could bear. I mean, they would keep it nice. Yeah. But this you is stay why, on it, right? This is why we typically would never go. We, we've run the Red Cliff, mm-hmm. and that's it. Like any, when you start going eight man or anything else, I start to feel like a teepee is not the right design. Yeah. Right. But the Red Cliff is about, it's pyramid. It's, it's you can tough. You fit three guys. You fit three guys and a giant stove, and it's enough to keep it. It's. It's sort of the maximum size. I feel like you can yeah. take advantage of a peat of a TP. for the lightweight and yeah. and what it's meant. Anything to be bigger used for. than that, you got to get rid of it. And it's still, and, and so you're dealing with a pretty comfortable living space, mm-hmm. but it doesn't compare to the wall tent. So anyway, and it's certainly not an eight man size. No, it's not. And so Bo has been telling me all about this tent, right? Telling me about this tent and mm-hmm. dropping hints that I should get one, right? And I never bought one, never got one. I'm like, I just, I don't see it. I had the same. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm like, oh. That's why I didn't get one because I were, couldn't talk him into taking one. He couldn't talk one. me into getting it. couldn't talk <laughs> yeah, me into it. I was you like, were, oh, no. I just wouldn't. Oh, I can't talk him into it. I, I wasn't like, You were bigoted against wall tents. I was. Just I like was. me. And he goes. I still am. So then he said, I'm just going to send you one. Yeah. And if you like it, you send me a check. <laughs> and if you don't like it, you just send it back, right? Kind of thing. Yeah. She yeah. sends it to me. And I'll be honest, when I first got it, I'm like, well, it's not that it came in this little box. And I'm like, it's not that bad. Yeah. But I didn't even do, I didn't really do anything with it for a while. And, uh, so I'm like, I got, I got to use this too. No, he didn't do anything with it for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I was going to so, say, I was going to say, like, I, f- I Dude, maybe I'm I've, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I on the bear hunt, like spring bear hunt, he was like, I have this teepee that Bo sent me, but I'm like, we didn't take it. I and know, I'm, I didn't take it. So I went on a family camping trip, and I was like, all right, baby, my wife. I said, I'm gonna take this new tent. We're gonna throw this thing. I want you to film me putting it up. <laughs> like I've never put it up. I didn't read the instructions. I, you know, I swear I wrote. I don't read. I, you know, I just said. <laughs> Let's does just does see. any man read instructions? Yeah, let's just like, see what happens. So I literally was pulling it out of the plastic uh, at the campground. Mm-hmm. Took me literally probably 15 or 20 minutes to put it up, only because I was like almost in unbelief how easy – it was just like yeah. how easy it was. I was kind of checking it out. I was just studying the poles. and mm-hmm. So then like, we get this thing up, and I'm looking – I'm like, this thing is legit. And like I'm zipping – this zipper is – 
Like nothing's gonna blow this zipper open, and uh, and the floor ties in, all the corners tied, so it, nothing could get in there. It's got the snow and the sod cover. I'm like, and then the sides all are tight, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna start taking this on the fall hunts. <laughs> so I totally didn't take it on a single. Brad bear. and Brian can't pack anything with the llamas, but I'm gonna take this. <laughs> yeah, day. I'm like, well, Brian and Brian are gonna have to start carrying some more stuff because the wall tent's coming. So when I first started my season, I took in my first solo hunt. I was in Idaho. Mm-hmm. Took it solo. Set it up. I'm like, oh, this is living. I, I, I'm just going to be honest here. <laughs> I missed the first two opening mornings. <laughs> no, I was snoozing. I, I was snoozing in that tent. I never set an alarm, right? Usually I wake up. Yeah, and it's I'm, darker, I'm, isn't it? Yeah. I'm well. No, I just was so comfortable in mm. this thing. The wind. You guys don't realize the noise, the noise that a yeah. normal tent makes because you. It's like when you if you live by the train tracks, right? Yeah. Yep. You get used to it. You just yeah, kind of like yeah. well, when it, all of a sudden it's quiet, dude. I overslept both two more my first two mornings, <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is, you know. And so he's getting soft. I, I was totally <laughs> sold then, and so we we rolled that thing all over. 60 some days of elk hunting. It was up with me the whole time. And uh, kind of fast forward, these llama pin ears, it goes in there. It doesn't have a tent back. Yeah. It doesn't right. need a tent back. You could put it in one. But the way boat, you just cram it in there, throw the stakes in, throw the poles in, boom, floor in, take the floor, don't take the floor. One of the things I love about the floor is it's probably a pound more than you could get away, but it's thick. So you notice that when we were on that snow hunt, yeah, I put that thing down on that snow, not one ounce of moisture soaked through that floor. Mm. Eli was walking around in there with his socks on. Yeah. Mark had his slippers. And I noticed, yeah, yeah and I noticed you guys had <laughs> mm-hmm. dirt floors. You had your little um, Tyvek sheets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're kind of dusting <laughs> off the, well, uh, the wood pieces. It turns into mud when the ground stops yeah. being frozen. And, and Eli looks- looked in there, he goes, ooh. They don't have a floor in there. I'm like, yeah, buddy, they don't roll like we roll. <laughs> so if you want to go over that side of the camp, you're welcome. That's man. Funny. And uh, so I love the floor. Yeah. And it, the corner zips out of it, right? Meaning it's, but it doesn't zip out, so you can't lose it. Mm-hmm. You zip it, you fold it under, and your stove goes in. Right. So you don't have to worry about any kind of floor burn. Yeah. No, and the stove jack, it's genius because it's got a flap. But you don't have to fight the flap. You know, a lot of TVs, you're rolling it, you're trying to Velcro it, yeah, you're trying to, yeah. this thing just rips right off. See, it completely comes off. I have lots of ideas for this. Like when, when it's summer, right? We'll, yeah. we'll throw the canvas cutters in the back of our trucks, in the side, back of a side by side. We'll cruise around and we will just throw that canvas cutter on the ground and go to sleep, get right back up and go. Nice. We'll ride out a storm, some wind, a little bit of rain, you know. But generally, when we run the canvas cutter, it's kind of that summer, uh, uh, early fall, yep. into fall. Don't get me wrong. Like I woke up and the canvas cutter with like six inches of snow on Same top here. of it. Same yeah. here. Lots you of know. times. Throw it on a, set up a cot even mm-hmm. and just sleep on it on a cot sometimes right outside the truck door. But um, there comes a time when there's a lot of rain. There's a lot of wind. There's actually the need for a shelter to you don't, dry out to dry out yeah. and you don't want to just be yeah. in and out of your truck and i can this is where th- this shelter comes into play a wall tent a traditional wall tent i don't want to set up because it takes too long it it's a, an ordeal and then breaking it down well i'd say size too like compact the packability because even a smaller wall tent i like my 10 by 10 or whatever is in a like a tote yeah, a big tote. So it's in like a big Costco. It's fifty pounds. It's fifty pounds. Yeah, where you this know? tent, that our smallest one, will fit in. Like my little five year old is in kindergarten all day kindergarten, and it will fit inside of his backpack. And yeah. I'm like, so I explained it. He's like, well, you know, larger size kids' backpack, it'll fit in it. You know, so like just to give you an idea, the speed right? of set. I can't exaggerate the speed of setup. So you know how hard it is for one person to set up an eight man TP, right? Mm, you know yeah. the footprint oh, yeah. of, yep. of a circular tent, right? With the four corner stake system that they got, they designed. Once you get those four corners in, it's like a, it's done. Yeah. It just is fine tuned from there. So then that takes me to the next thing. So with the teepees, I'm always throwing away the stakes that come with it. Mm-hmm. Those little red stakes that aren't that are not twisted. You I always the, switch the, to the, the MSR hunt. groundhog or something yeah, like that. You got to mm-hmm. switch to the, the the twist longer because you're trying to fight the wind, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So 
these are aluminum. The steaks weigh a, what? A, what do they weigh? A pound and a half? The set? Two yeah, pounds? I think they're two pounds for the full steak. So it's a full. Now, that sounds heavy, right? But they're, I mean, I have not bent one. I'm hammering in with mm-hmm. a steak or a rock or you, whatever. You brought in a hammer. I carry like a, a hatchet like a, in. A hatchet. And, and just drive them in. And so what, what it does is they're bigger steaks, but it takes like, I think my eight man take 18 steaks. Yeah. This takes six. Now, I think it comes with eight. Or ten, yeah. I think we sent twelve with it, but we I don't use them all you don't unless need I need them. Yeah, yeah. What I usually run is four corners, two sides. That's it. Mm-hmm. And the back. I'm sorry, the back, two sides. That's it. So seven stakes. Now, if I feel like it's going to get a little rocky, that's when I'll throw the front <laughs> ones up. Right. Um, but dude, I've had it in serious wind. I, I am not worried about that zipper at all. It's really heavy. Dude. I've got this zipper thing. I have had more tents fail me at the zipper because yep. they, they just can't take the wind and they get stretched. Well, when, you have, when you have the wind, well, you, you remember you spring. have to, you have the wind. So you have to suck that teepee down really tight to help. There's a difference though in fabric too. So yeah. yep. Dyneema zipper zippers in Dyneema are much more prone to fail. If the tent design because mm-hmm. they don't give as they much. They don't give. Yeah. Yep. And yep. so when you have Dyneema, that, 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 that. All the pressure is on the zipper. And so like with the peaks, it's a dome. Dome. That's door. a much better design. And so there's no there's no strain on the zipper. Yeah. But yeah. like a seek, the zipper goes up the sidewall. And when you stake it out on each side, that zipper is has tension pulling on yep. it the whole time. And so the trick is you pull, you kind of pull. On the door side, you pull toward yourself, mm-hmm. not – you don't pull the door taut. Right, taut. exactly. You, you kind of pinch it almost in out on itself, and you pull it taut in one direction. Yep. That puts less pressure on the zipper, yep. but still um, – But think about what you just said. You're, you're – There's a little nuance. You're nuances. planning for failure. Yeah. You're working around failure. I haven't had the same thing happen on a sill nylon seek. No. But the Dyneema, I've lost a number of zippers. And I've one lost time, three on my sill nylon. We lost one in spring. Did you? And, and we had to quit using that one yeah, door because it's separated. And again, that, I mean, we're on a, we're using a bigger yeah, teepee too. Yeah. I mean, it's like a wind sail sitting out there. True. You know, when you yeah. have those Why would you want to go in a four man? I mean, come on. Who goes in a four man teepee? <laughs> Jeez, you guys dude, are, that's you were soft. <laughs> uh, but, but so the speed of setup was so. So I'm moving a lot. I'm out there a lot. I was not. I was not excited about this wall town. Be honest with you, I was not. I'm like, but well, me either. I, I'm like, until I, 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 I don't want to take the it. time to set this thing up. He's always oh, fast. It's fast. I'm like, it's not fast. It's a wall tent. I've been around fast. wall tents, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've been in wall tents that got yanked out in the middle of the night too. When Ryan and I were on that, yeah, under, I remember that. The whole tent was gone. Ty's double filled sleep my neck. The next minute we're outside. <laughs> mm-hmm. One minute we're in the tent. Next minute we don't know where the tent went. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and. uh so, I just have had bad experiences. But when, the first time I took that thing hunting, I, I haven't been in another tent since. Yeah, yeah. It's been every time, all What's, the time. What is what have other people been saying? Because you know we can't necessarily rely on Mark. You know, he's kind of a soft <laughs> hunter. I, I've only had one night in it, technically. Sure. Uh, yeah. What are other people saying? You know, um, I've been really happy with the response. Everyone that. It, bought it had a, a specific use for it in mind mm-hmm. and then ended up using it for more than what they intended mm-hmm. and that was that was really reassuring because i'm i'm very curious on what a diehard wall tent dude yeah like your your like horse often, guy your like guide. sometimes you we talked about backpacks today yeah yeah right yeah you you bought four backpacks four backpacks from different manufacturers yep had this your wife is, unstitch on the branding, the logos. The so, logos. so you had no idea, you know, whose is who really. I mean, I guess you could you guess. Like I had but, a pretty good idea, but there was two that I'm like, I, I can't place it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And that was the goal: is just to grab and go and see on those backpacks. But mm-hmm. anyway, yeah. And you went, you tested four packs, and you're like, at the end, you felt like one was really solid. I would say what you say, great, way a. above, way above the rest. And, and then the rest there was the BC. other three, and then the other classes were kind of all just together, one step down. Yeah. It's interesting because it was an initial ascent pack. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Which I've it, been saying for a while now. Me too. It carries loads. It performs better. This is funny because you said that without knowing at all 
that I use an initial ascent. Yeah, I didn't I've... know what you guys used, and mm-hmm. I had no idea what you were using. I was just like, you know, we're all talking backpacks in the truck today <laughs> on the way to lunch, and I'm like, well, I kind of feel like the the outcasts are bringing this up because you're like, Stone Glacier, <laughs> you know, Gavarus, you know, yeah. like yeah, Exo, and I was like, well, kind of, kind of like this one initial ascent, guys, you know? Yeah. And you guys are like, I had no idea. I looked idea. at you, you know, and I was, I was like, like, that's the one I used. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know, and so that was pretty. That's cool. That's cool because you came up with, you know, you can't kind of came to the same deduction after testing a lot of tents for or a lot of packs. That's my issue is when I want to when I want an opinion, I really want an opinion from somebody who used hardcore yeah. used. Like it doesn't do me any good to talk to someone who's only used one backpack but loves it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm like, look, you don't really know for sure. It's probably a great pack. It's just not as good as maybe this one or maybe that one. And until you until you are someone who has really tried both, it's just like better, good, better, best. Yeah. You know, right. they're all good, but I want to find the best. Which one has that little, little bit difference um, that, that I can, that makes it su- supreme. Right. And when, so I'm kind of curious, what do these, other wall tent guys think who are like hardcore fans over here. And now they're going to use this. Cause that's the informed opinion I'm trying to get at. Otherwise, all I have is a still nylon tent and this new canvas one. And then the canvas one I grew up in, which I mm-hmm. want nothing to do with. Right. 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 You know, that's a great, here's the thing is when you like horse guys, I don't know why horse mule um, folks, they, they like, the, they want to pick on the llama outfitter. Right? You know, they want to pick on the llama owner. And uh, most of them actually think, I think, understand the, the differences and they respect them. But it's still like when they're never going to stop making fun of me ever as long <laughs> as I live. <laughs> and I'm okay with it. Yeah. It's, it's a really fun banter with horse and mule guys. And truth be told, like I, we own 35 horses and run a small day riding <laughs> operation myself. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't talk about it a lot. And so like I, I get the, the, the jive all the time. But for – most of our tents that we've sold, believe it or not, have gone number one to people that are packing with horses and mules. Mm-hmm. And number two, they've gone to people that are doing car camping and ATV camping. And number three, they're going to lawn packers. And number four, they're ending up with uh, goat guys, which I didn't know if they're going to work well for goats. Mm-hmm. But our smallest tent, the way they break down and the weight, it actually has ended up working really well for goats. Oh, yeah. So that was pretty positive for me. But number one is horse and mule guys. And those are also the biggest user group of traditional canvas tents. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think what sells them on it is that they can pack it, you know, on the cannel <laughs> of their horse if they wanted to, or and, and that it comes with an internal frame that all fits. In, they can fit their the tent, the floor, the stakes, the poles, and their stove on one side of a, um, a horse or a mule. Yep. And then add more gear on that same side and if like they I, wanted. Yeah, like I said before, most guys with a canvas tent and a horse, they're designating one horse. They're designating yeah, one just horse. Just pack just the, the teepee, and, or not teepee, but the canvas tent yeah. and maybe the stove, nothing else. So my friend is a horse packer, not a, he, not commercial, but he has a horse that he packs himself. We were talking about this. And he's like, oh, this is going to – I don't have to go in and set tents up ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. You know, I don't got to go in there and cut poles – and yeah. store them, and, I, and then if I want to move my camp, I got to think about, totally. I got to go do that again, because yeah. a lot of these guys are cutting their own poles once they're in, right? Once they're in. And then, I didn't, th- I didn't even know this, I didn't know how many of these guys go in ahead of time, oh. set up, because one, they need the space to bring gear in, sure. but two, they just, they don't want the time Dude, with clients. The, the idea of breaking down a wall tent means, it's stressful. screw it, I'm going home. Yeah. yeah, like you just don't want to move. Or yeah. I would say, when you're on a hunt, you are you've maybe limited yourself to just that yeah. I spot. feel I feel trapped with a wall tent because I feel like now I got to stay here. This yeah. is a big deal. It's a big commitment. Well, the thing about this tent is, if you ever set up a, a Hilleberg or you know like an eight man teepee, for example, uh-huh. or most sheep herder style canvas tents, mm-hmm. this tent with one person, our smallest design, can be set up faster than all those other tents. Yeah. If you look at a four season backpacking style tent, you know, with uh, Eastern fiberglass poles, it can be set up in most scenarios faster than that. And it's just so it's just the way that it's designed. We yeah. broke down our tents about the same time as Mark broke down yeah. the canvas, yeah. and his came down as fast as ours did, and was he was packed. 
He's packed a little faster than us. So yeah. here's the deal, too, for Actually, me. Actually, but like, all he had was a bunch of panniers to stuff. We had a technical pack to fill. Yep. You know, we had he wouldn't to, let us pack, us all, uh, pack uh, it on the lawn. Technical yeah, so. initial scent pack. <laughs> he had it. So, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You're... Uh, you say you can carry so much weight with that initial sin. I want to see it. <laughs> you know, the thing for me when Bo was telling me about it, I was like, I, I wasn't interested because when I'm hunting solo particularly, mm-hmm. I move, I'm move. i very mobile. mobile. I'm super mobile. And I'm like, this thing's going to pin me down, right? Yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking. And I just could not believe how fast this thing sets up. You know, the other thing I noticed too, Bo, I don't even know if you and I talked about this, but you know how hard it is to put a teepee up on uneven ground, right? Sometimes, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, it's like this tent. Because you're never going to get it pitched right. Yeah. I put this thing up on a crazy slant mm-hmm. and just dug my bed out inside the tent. Mm-hmm. It's been two days. They're totally comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I'd have been in that teepee, I'd been fighting all that We're angles. accustomed to digging out, you know, 20 uh, inches of side hill yeah. for the teepee. <laughs> but I, I couldn't believe how much of a non-perfect spot you could put this thing yeah. up in. Right, right. Did right. you like the drying rack in the tent? Oh, the rope? The rope. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I mean, so it, the way it works is there's two polymer unions, unions, right? And there's a hole. A- at the top of the A-frame. And the great thing about putting it, you know, when you're doing it by yourself, right? You're trying to put one side up as soon as you move the other, mm-hmm. the poles fall. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, again, I mean, he really thought about this because when you put it together, you put the rope between the two, you pull it tight and it Holds everything together. Holds the frame together. Yeah. So when you pull the canvas I up on that. top by yourself, nothing comes apart, right? right? So super easy. And then you've got this beautiful laundry rack um, to hang in, you know, whatever. <laughs> lights. Or Party or lights. Or lights. <laughs> <laughs> disco and, strobe uh, in there. Yeah, I got a little disco ball going in there. Um, you know, it, it's, it's very efficient for that. Um, but... I will say, too, is like the condensation. You're going to get condensation in there mm-hmm. just like anything else. But the breathe, the breathability of it, it doesn't drip. Mm-hmm. It might get a little damp. and It'll dry with the stove just like a teepee does. Maybe it takes a little longer if it's natural fiber. But the point is it won't rain it's on not you. raining on you in there yeah. um, from that. Now, if you touch it, it's going to feel damp in the morning, whatever. Um, but I was blown away. I wasn't – when I got it, he – didn't have the stove ready or at the time or whatever. Right. So I didn't get a stove with it. So I just hacked off my pipe of my mm-hmm. SL and I thought, well, this is gonna not gonna probably work, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take it. I literally can only put a stick of, in there at a time. We Eli and I were cooking in there. Yeah. Yeah. But we, you, normally in my eight man, I gotta keep that thing pretty loaded. Yeah. Stoked. Yeah. When it's super cold. Yep. Yep. I, I really could not believe how that tent was holding the temperature. And it seems, I don't know if the square footage, what it is compared to that, but it's pretty good. Yeah. It's more usable yeah. square footage, I can tell you that, space. Yeah, being absolutely. square. So it held a what, lot of temperature. What about the, uh, when you do take it down, one of the nightmares with canvas is it gets wet. Yeah. And it's heavy, and now you got to dry it out in your garage or something and all that kind of stuff. Tell me about uh, it's it the water situation, how it handles water or snow. What's the difference? What's the downside there? Sure. So um, water, what we've tested is basically if you can two inches over 24 hours and the fabric will still maintain its value. Any more rain than that, um, it's going to start penetrating the, the, the canvas itself. So if you're going to use it somewhere where you're going to get, you know, inches of rain, just bring a tarp. You know, that's mm. kind of the suggestion. And when you add a tarp, you actually add our value too mm. and the insulation value to the tent, which is really nice. Just like a blue tarp. And, whatever, and, and I think tarp. any canvas tent, you know, that's kind of always been that's the standard. The yeah. That's you what know. you expect. And, we, and we, have a, we have tarps for it. You know, we have a heavy version, a light version. And you can also just go get a $13 one, you know, uh, at a 7 mil from Walmart for 15 bucks or whatever. Mm, yeah. You know, so there's lots of different options when it comes to the tarp. But that's only if you're going to see – Two inches or more of rain, and you, which isn't typical on any of our late season. It's no, not no, very typical. Not it's, you talked about it earlier, like on the southern Utah stuff that you guys, you know, when you were right. testing this, you get those monsoons. We get these and monsoons, stuff. and that's where we really learned, you know, what the tent is capable of—the mm-hmm. fabric itself, right? Mm-hmm. And is the monsoons on the Aquarius Plateau down in Utah? And it's like wow. You know, because it can rain okay, inches yeah. in just a, in just a few hours. Okay, and so that's kind of where we learned um, really what it was capable of. But then we sent some up on the Pacific Northwest, and they're still up there rocking those tents really hard. And that's also a great um, testing field yeah. for rain. That's where and I grew up. 
a lot of learning, you know, so I'm very transparent with people, you know, mm-hmm. as we want them to, again, to have success when they're out there using it. And there's no, we're not hiding anything, you know, it's like, this is what it's capable of. This is what it can do. Yeah. And the snow loads, um, you know, eight to 10 inches of snow, depending on how heavy it is, um, it can handle it. But most of the time the snow doesn't stay because of the roof pitch. Mm-hmm. Being a, a six twelve, and then the the rigid A frame, and the way that we pull and out how the tight top, it is, yeah. it just it just falls off typically. And if you get that much snow, you just it's easy to really tap knock it, it t- tap it, knock it off. But it will handle that load pretty well. And uh, anyway, okay. So one last question, I guess, or maybe maybe a couple more. But <laughs> here here's another question for you. Why ha- didn't why didn't another tent manufacturer come up with this a long time ago? You know, I asked myself that same question, and I also asked myself, why did the other tent manufacturers that I brought this to, you know, in, in 2016 and 17 and 18, why did, it down. why did they turn it down? And I think it's because in a lot of ways, like, I was this young guy that ran llamas, and so I had a very weird, like... Who's this elk hunter mm-hmm. with llamas, red beard, bringing And you got a red beard. beard like, nobody idea. trusts the guy with a red yeah. beard. No one trusts yeah. the guy with a ginger beard, you know? <laughs> and I think that was a piece of it, to be honest with you. And I think okay. the other piece is they were selling as much as they wanted to. They were as busy as they wanted to be. And for them to take on a new product. They don't need to innovate. They don't need to innovate, you know? Like, we're, we're there with their critical mass. They love mm-hmm. the space that they're in. And they've been doing it for, my dad started this and my grandpa and, you yeah. know, like, we've been doing yep. this. And I was like, okay. I get it. Well, and this is a specialized tent. And they didn't see the value in it. I, I don't like, know, Mark. Man, the wall tents have been around forever, and it's like, I don't think they've they've innovated that no, much. No, I mean, right? that's Honestly. what I mean. This the is same. a very specialized and, and, wall tent. But right. again, again, though, why didn't they 10, 15, 20 years ago why didn't start nobody coming out with else innovated? the same, like, it pretty much gives you the same value at half the weight. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why they, like the floor system, I never understood that. And the that. setup, what all if that you, stuff. What if you don't want to take a floor? Or what if you want to be able to take one, you know? And what if, why does it have to be sewn in and be mm-hmm. permanent? And so all these things I never understood. It's like, why does it have to be a sheep herder's tent with a center pole? What if you yeah. don't want a freaking center pole because you want to sleep there? Right. You know, yeah. it's like, why don't we use all the space as usable? Like all these things in my head, I just, like, I just don't understand. Why do I have to go cut my own... 18 Why foot pole. Exactly. <laughs> and so just so many things came together in my head. And, uh, you know, Snow Trekker has done such a good job building their company and reputation over the years. And I was really fortunate that they picked this up um, and were willing to work with me. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, be honest with you, and I hope they're not listening because <laughs> they might not like this, but it took a while for me to like, hey, this is what it needs to be. This is what it needs to be. And they're like, ah. I don't know. I'm like, please, just trust me. I'll pay, I'm paying you to do it, all this stuff. Yeah. Just trust me. And and they did, and they went with it, and then we went with all the modifications over the years, and what we have now, we can stand behind, and it's been tested through and through, and I'm just like, yes, yeah, we did it. That's you know? cool. And now we did it for ourselves. We did it for our business, and now I'm like, man, we we need to figure out the next step, and that's letting the the public get out there and, and buy this thing and use it. And that's where we're at now. Mm-hmm. We really want people, obviously it's not our main uh, core of business, but it should be because yeah. I think that's a, it's a, it has a place in the market for sure. Yeah. So yeah. they also, to kind of tie into the podcast we did on renting llamas, when they rent llamas from you, they can also rent this tent. Yeah. For next to nothing. We yeah, rent it out dude, for us with the stove and the tent for a hundred bucks for the week. What uh, you know? It's just it's yeah yeah. We that's want to a try no-brainer. it out, right? And yeah, then that's we'll, a no. If they rent llamas from us, they get the tent and the stove for a hundred bucks a week, and then we'll take that hundred dollars off if they buy the tent from us. So, um, what stove do you run for yours? I mean, we you use the uh, SXL Seek Outside, which was plenty, and that was before. Well, you got the tent and you Yo, used it. That's before. the only thing I w- I would make a change to this tent. We'll say it live. <laughs> He's going to mm-hmm. poop, make poop it all some over it. Make some kind of adapter, something where we could take the four inch or five inch, whatever that pipe is, down to something for the three inch. Sure. Because what I ended up having to do is I just ran a wire around it and hooked it to the side tag. It was easy to do. Because mm-hmm. you're on a three inch stove I'm pipe. I'm just running the little TP one. a four one. inch open. Yeah. 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 And I, I've been thinking about inserting a boot in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, anyway. We could talk That's about that. I've been, yeah. I've been thinking about inserting a boot, an expandable boot, 
But I think the problem is, is once you run a three inch, great, that's fine and dandy. But the time you go run four, <laughs> you're not going to go back. You're not going to go back. Yeah. And you're then, a llama guy, Mark. You know, you don't so need to like, run the three. oh, I'm going to upgrade. <laughs> Peaks does the, uh, you know, you can cut it. It comes with a uh, with pre. You you cut your own cut your own for what you want. Yeah. It comes with yeah. the that's markers. That's how most of the the so you can just go. I are. want it this big, and you just you right. just cut yep. it. And, but right. that w- doesn't account for when you want to go back down back down in a size. But we have found that it's fine. Like so, it's a little s- bit big. Yeah. When you go with with the smaller this pipe, one's fine except the wind you know. was whipping my um your that stove pipe. It, it, the, the hole was big, my mm. small, right? It was just yeah. moving, and I was fr- I was afraid, yeah, no, I'm just <laughs> that it was going to come disconnected from the stove, yeah, it, yeah, when it was moving around so much, yeah. So I'm pretty faithful to the Riley stoves or Riley out of Townsend, Montana. Mm-hmm. Um, I've used all the stoves out there, and I have a lot of collapsible stove um, from Seek, and they're all wonderful stoves, and they all have their place. When it comes to llama packing, um, you know, we have the three sizes: the nine and a half by nine and a half. 11 by 11 and 13 by 13 and the Riley little amigo stove and all three tents. Mm-hmm. And, um, I would say in almost all seasons is pretty ideal. How much does that weigh? Um, it's uh 12 pounds. You're uh, that's up there. Yeah. It's a 12 pound stove and it's non collapsible, you know, so it's a full box, but it's got a dual wall. And the cool thing about that stove is tell that- me on that because I got to tell you, man, that just sounds too heavy. Yeah. Especially when you're getting cooked out of the tent with with my SL with just a kind of a titanium box. And it's it, a pain in the butt to set up. I, I there's mm-hmm. there's few things that piss me off more. <laughs> I typically when I'm when I'm screw. when I'm screwing the the wing nuts on on a on a screw rod and yep. and if it's the U-turn like I the whole time I set it up, I'm like Sounds someday up. Someday someone will come up with something yeah. so much better than this. Yeah. Um, in some ways, it achieves it checks so many boxes, and in other ways, I find it's 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 the place of that's just ripe for innovation. Yeah. <laughs> it takes longer. One, it takes longer to do the oh it pisses CSL me off. than it does set the TP up. Yeah. Any I mean, stove, then, then any backpacking time. lightweight stove sucks to set up yeah. and annoys me to operate, but. The heat evil. is high, and and it doesn't weigh but two pounds. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's a ten three, point. It's a ten get. pound penalty for me to go with what you're suggesting. Right. So what what do I get out of that for that extra ten pounds? So when you do a side by side comparison with the collapsible uh, backpacking stove, you get ultra lightweight. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. get it burns hot, but what you lose is it it doesn't burn it long. doesn't burn long. Yeah, true. It's a single wall. It has it burns fast because it usually has leaks in it, right? Mm-hmm. The, yep. the, everything you can't stand on it, suggesting that it's not very strong, right? Mm-hmm. If, oh yeah. And then cooking on it is not great because it doesn't have uh, a great cooking surface because it wants to warp. Well, you certainly can't cook like I've seen you cook with Randy Newberg, <laughs> right? Like you guys cook, you guys overcook. Let overcook. me just tell you. Like the king, the hey, but no one's complaining. <laughs> no one's complaining. They, they eat like kings. Guys, no one's complaining. Yeah, it, it's like it's like a four star restaurant. In you there. guys think I'm bad? You have not been on a hunt with this guy. <laughs> I suppose when you pack in twenty two llamas, that extra ten pounds doesn't mean squat. Nothing. Hey, full send or no send, you know. <laughs> and so what you get with the Riley stove is you get a dual wall, so it holds heat a lot longer. Mm-hmm. You get a uh-huh. bigger stove box opening. And you get a little bit longer depth, so you can put bigger logs in, so you can burn longer. Um, you could you could stand on it. A three hundred pound person can stand on it. It's really rigid. It sets up a lot faster. Mm-hmm. And then the to- stove top surface, um, because it's broken up into different sections and is a lot tighter, so you don't have wind that sucks it down, and yeah. you can cook on it. And so there's pros and cons. the The biggest con um, of the Riley stove system is that it's you know, seven to 10 pounds heavier than your ultralight collapsible backpacking mm-hmm. stove. Um, but if you're packing with llamas and you run our smallest nine and a half by nine and a half tent, you can put on one side of a llama, you can put the tent, the stove, the stakes, the poles, and the floor, plus um, maybe two to four pounds of gear all on one side. So it's all one kit. So it just becomes a little system. A little Everything unit. is in one pannier. That's Everything's I, in one pannier. So I bought some extra panniers because 
I just leave my tents in. It's ready to go. I just grab right. it. It's ready to go. I don't even yeah. unpack it yeah. unless I need to dry it. Yeah. So I want to mention this real quick. You mentioned about when it's wet, mm-hmm. dealing with it, right? Mm-hmm. I will say that when canvas gets wet and you're making a move, it's going to weigh a pound more, maybe two pounds more than, than it was. But remember, I'm it's putting, not as much as I would think. It no, would but be. I'm putting it back in the same pannier. Yeah. And the llama, the weight is not going to make a difference to the llama. And when you set it up wet, it's not dripping. It yeah. feels yeah. wet, but it goes up just fine. You know, well, you well, ever put up a wet well, teepee? And, it sucks. And I would <laughs> say, it sucks. I would say, you know, still nylon, you're going to get ice. the stretch and the, yeah. you know, where you Long don't get stretch. that. You don't but get here's the, the thing at home. He, this tent's got two hooks. Now, I, I meant to ask you, can you, could this tent be hung? By those hooks and put up, or is that just for both? Yep. Okay, but anyway, it's got two metal hooks. Mm-hmm. So what I did in my gr- in my hunting room, you I got have, a hammock in there, Mark. Gee, I, well, you <laughs> own, I don't know. Really. I have two. I just pull it up and let it dry in my inside, right? Yeah, which is really nice. And so when I, but I had to do that with my seat too, yeah. or my teepee. I had to pull it yeah. up, let it dry. Yeah. And uh, so the problem when you're drying a sill is it sticks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you have to put a broom. You have to. You know, get it where it's yeah. getting air. I always put like some bricks or whatever to. Yeah, know, but keep this it split this canvas, out. Yeah. I just it doesn't matter if it's touching. Mm-hmm. In a day, it'll be dry. Yeah, and so it it does hold the moisture. Um, it will add a little bit of weight if it's super super wet. But I found putting it up wet, taking it down wet, easy. It's a pain to just it gets wet, but it's not. It doesn't hinder the process. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, it's it's not. Uh, I'm shocked that it's not holding me back. From making moves, that was my biggest. Yeah, m- worry. mine too. I would think with that type of ten, I'd be like, "Dude, that thing's gonna pick up ten pounds of water." Mm-hmm. You know, you know. Uh, but because it is, it is built to shed water. It's gonna take on some. But, it's gonna take some, but it's. But that's interesting. I haven't like, had to get super because our canvas getters get yeah. hammered. So is it like a treated it canvas? Is. Yeah, it's yeah. it's very similar in in design and style as your canvas cutters, mm-hmm. except for um, it's thinner. It's more of a quadra weave, and so it's a little bit tighter. Mm, yeah. And so you get more runoff. And then your canvas cutters, I mean, they're just, when they're they're sitting there, they're like capture moisture, capture yeah, moisture. Yeah. You're a big old pool yeah. where when you're pitched tight, you lose a lot of it. And you only get it on, you know, four feet of roof where your side wells aren't going to carry any moisture. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. When I go back to like setup, you know, you have a sheep herder style canvas tent or whatever i mean you got to also unless you have them pre-made but it kind of defeats the purpose you're you have to cut your center pole yep you have to cut your corner poles yep. or you know posts verticals yep. verticals and with the whole setup you're already lighter and you have the frame built into that whole setup right and you can which, set it up very quickly yeah so if i were to buy one um you know if i was gonna, gonna weigh it out let's say uh I was I went over to Montana or Davis or something to buy a, a ten by ten wall tent with a frame. What am I? What's that cost roughly right now? You're going to be typically eighteen hundred to twenty six hundred bucks, depending on if you're getting a blend style, if you're getting all canvas, and if you're going, you know, ten ounce or twelve ounce canvas. And then what features? What people don't realize is like, well, with one of our tents, you get not only the canvas itself and the frame, and the stakes, but you also get the floor, you know. Mm -hmm. And if you say, okay, well, I want a 10 by 10 from Davis and Montana Canvas, who are great tent manufacturers, Mm -hmm. and I own multiples of each of their tents. Well, I want the the stakes, the tent, the floor, and a fly of some kind. When you start looking at full packages, side-by-side comparison, the cost analysis is sometimes their tents, depending on the size, are a little more for a full package, and sometimes they're a little bit less than ours. But we're right there in the ballpark. But what you're getting is you're paying for a full package. The whole thing. Tents, the whole thing. And you're getting all the lightweight. You're getting the Easton breakdown packable poles, which when I tell people is like, look, you need to understand the frame is 22 inches long. I know. And fits in into your both of your hands put together. It's like holding a softball. It's yeah. like, that's what, that's what you don't realize. It's like the whole frame is this big. Yeah. And, you, and you take another frame from one of the other canvas manufacturers or whatever. You need a tote. Yeah, like, and like, <laughs> or another bag. I mean, you're, yeah. another bag. You're, you're, I would say, basketball size, and typically weighs more than the canvas or, or, yeah. or comparable, right. right? Yeah. Yep. So anyway. you're, so if I want a nine, by, your nine by nine, which is what Mark has, that's going to cost me what for the whole kit and caboodle? Tw- Twenty three hundred. Okay. Yep, and and everything 
you know, our uh, canvas is made overseas, but everything's uh, fabricated right here in the U.S., all handmade in Wisconsin, which I'm really proud of. You know, mm -hmm. that fact is that we, we keep the cottage manufacturing part of this inside of the U.S. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, so that for me, that's really important. And um, our and tents are about three weeks out from order. And okay. we do have some in stock, but if we run out of stock, it takes us three make, weeks to hand make them. So. Depending on demand, uh, you might have some in stock, but it's it's best for somebody to to get on in on this uh, three weeks ahead of three time. Three weeks ahead, yep. That's that's kind of our lead time. Our lead time right now. If it's, you're renting llamas, make sure you add one on. You'll be buying one after you do that. You know, and for a hundred bucks, they can rent it for a week. They can rent it, test it out, and to be honest with you, every single tent that we've rented, mm -hmm. except for one. They bought it, and I'm like, yeah. okay. This and is and when, that they, says when they vol rent that's it, oh, man, right yeah. there. Say, that's, and when you rent, we should have led with that. <laughs> yeah, when you rent it for the hundred bucks, if they purchase it, then they get the hundred bucks. They get off. the hundred bucks off. Yeah, Our, I mean, we're not trying to become millionaires off this thing. We're trying to just build a family business, um, help people out, have good products, and just enjoy the outdoors. Mm -hmm. And and you don't do that by not taking care of people. Yeah. You know, and if I look at it, it's like, well, if I rented llamas from this guy, and he rented me his tent for a good deal. You know, I'd probably ask him, hey, if I like this tent, will you give me that $100 off? And I'd say, absolutely, you know. You okay. should do a code with Gritty. I'm all in. I'm, I'm, here we are. I'm, I'm ambushing you right now, right on the show. We should Mark, do. Mark, you should have told me this was coming, man. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> we should do. A, we should pass on a little savings to uh, the Gritty audience if anybody's interested. Yeah. I don't want to extort you right now, but <laughs> you should come up with uh, something if if you want to, like where where the uh, buyer can get a little discount if they shop, because yeah, absolutely, I think it's a killer. Uh, I I really am um, a oh, fan. I, I see uh, in my head, like the whole time we've been sitting here, I'm like, well, we could use it there. <laughs> Well, we could use it there. Yeah. If we got the llamas, we could I mean, use it there. I'm thinking like Arizona on a bunch of stuff. Dude, absolutely. Um, like money. Yeah, I'm thinking. Other, well, so that floor, we didn't talk about this much. I wouldn't say it's, this floor is not 100% scorpion proof. Yeah. But <laughs> Snake. when you, if you take it to Arizona, I'm just, because that was one of my, that's one of my big problems in Arizona. That's nah, late season. You don't need that. And, <laughs> but when you fold that sod cover under mm -hmm. the way I do it. I fold it under and then I tie the, the floors floor on top man, of it. Man, it's pretty tight. The other thing for us is we almost always set up a base camp yeah. shelter yeah. Yep. in Arizona. And everywhere, everywhere. We go, okay. every everywhere. state we're in. Really? Mm -hmm. And then we we go in, you know, we can go in miles and miles. Say we go five or six days of food, we can leave four or five, six days of food back at yeah. that location. And you kill an elk. We you know, when we, we don't have llamas generally, mm -hmm. so we we leave our shelter, tent, everything kind of back there. Hmm. We'll bomb out, and we already have that shelter ready to go That's sitting nice. at base camp. Yeah, we don't have to pack our shelter. And, it's yeah. almost always an eight-man teepee, mm -hmm. but I would replace it with this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it would be – it would fit the bill a lot better. Well, and I'm thinking, you know, a lot of, too, like some of the late-season hunts that I do, bow hunts or whatever, it's like most of the time I'm not – backpacking in that far staying overnight it's like man, or I, you're only going for two days two days or two whatever days, yeah. you're kind of hunting out of a base camp mm -hmm. i'm like throw that sucker up and the heat but yeah, i think no, where we bomb weather. around on the side by side I like in too. arizona we're just everywhere and we just find gear and we stop i do too and then we just camp yeah and it's side by side. we usually we'll just throw out a canvas cutter well I, the thing is but i still would kick it in the canvas cutter but i don't need to throw the pole system in my canvas cutter you know but there's times where we're going to be there for a couple of days it'd be nice to yeah just absolutely. throw up the wall tent and uh and leave your stuff all in there whatever well so what i did on two hunts so i i have the new seek guardian tent now the one with uh um, no zipper with the, mm -hmm. with the with the with the it, oh yeah it's, it's, it's like the silex but it's a two big big it's much bigger yeah run your pole system so i just got it and what <laughs> this is really gonna make me look bad. <laughs> so I roll it in with the wall tent. I set my wall tent up about three or four miles in, and I found the spot. I was running into these elk. I'm like, I didn't want to move my camp because I thought I was in a good spot. And so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna leave this one here. I had the guardian in my in my kit, and I went and stayed two days in my guardian. Just packing two tents, two and then pair of came boots. Back, <laughs> came back to my wall tent, 
and it's pretty dang nice. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, you're a good salesman. Buddy. It's nice. It's yeah. nice. I like yeah, it. I appreciate I really, you guys uh, bringing me on today and let me talk shop and uh, get some. Yeah, you just bet. Some good thoughts and ideas out there. Is you really bet. Fun. Um, if people want to check it out, you have you have it listed on the website. Yep, it's just listed underneath our tents page on our website at www.wildernessridgetraillamas.com. Yeah, good thing you didn't have to say that. that um, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you said it. Yep. Well, I would say this too, Bo. Is I mean, this is not just something you quickly put together. Like you said, this is a. a a five, six, seven year process to put this together. Yeah, it, it definitely is. And, uh, you know, people can buy in confidence knowing if they, for some reason, don't like the tent, we have no problem buying it back, you know, um, and uh, using it within our, our business or uh, selling it, you know. Well, the other thing, too, you mentioned this, and I don't know if people caught it, but it's got a three year warranty. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. And you've had I one mean, claim? Yeah, one claim. You <laughs> burned um, it. The, 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 the That's guy, not, the guy have you covered it. that? Yeah, I mean, it was just one of those situations yeah. where it's like, oh, okay, this is this is the deal how it happened, and uh, it, you know, it was the right Mark, thing to do. So, it, was it you? No, it wasn't <laughs> you. no, no, it yeah. wasn't me. And, you know, you'll get more claims and stuff like that, but most of them, I think, that will come or be going to be user error. Yeah, you know, yeah, You're not setting up sure. right or not taking the time to put a stay out or something like that. And uh, you know, it's it's kind of a lifetime tent, and I think that as people purchase it. And the people that have bought them this year have realized, like, oh, this tent fits more needs than I anticipated and is going to be my go-to for most of my stuff. Well, and I, But they're also going to have one or two other pieces of equipment yeah. that they're going to utilize. But, again, I think this will be a priority for yeah, them. Yeah, and I think, you know, almost any canvas tent is that way. You know, like, my grandpa had a canvas tent, handed it down to my dad. Yeah. And yeah, then we yeah. still use that canvas tent. I mean, this for is sure. 40 years later, you know, yeah. Yeah. the longevity of it. For the that's price. Right. And that's what, that's what you hope people do. In, uh, generations. In generations. And generations. Yeah. And we have tents that on our rental fleet that get used all the time, you know. Yeah. And, and I'm like looking at them after two seasons and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm like, yeah, they still look great. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Well, cool. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Yeah. Thank you. Guys. Thank you, Mark. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mark, people can find you at Treeline Pursuits, Treeline Academy. TreelineAcademy.net. I'm switching everything to TreelineAcademy.net. Just okay. built a brand new website. It just launched yesterday. And uh, I love it. And you yeah, have uh, just launched yesterday. E scouting courses. E scouting the new map kits. You have some uh, how um, to are. backcountry I've got meals. Sweet. I've got they several are. podcasts on there that Bo and I've done on Mamas. I don't know if you even remember those podcasts. Yeah, you have I links know. to all the podcasts you've done. Yeah, you have them with yeah. Gritty some too, of those right? down at the bottom. Yeah, some of those down at the bottom are oldies but goodies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the ones that you and I did That's back cool, in the man. old old days. Yeah. So people can go there and then. It's uh, Wilderness Ridge Trail Llamas dot com. <laughs> so much for the code. That's a big word. It's oh, Wordle. Yeah. We're gonna get on the codes. We'll. Uh, we'll do if some, he can't uh, pronounce the name, it's, it's Wordle. Hey, Shut hey, up. <laughs> hey, it's okay. If he can't pronounce the name, I'll I'll do it. I'm okay. That's all right. I'll do it for him. <laughs> yeah. Um, I say. Uh, yeah. I folks. By the time we drop this podcast, I think we'll come up with some kind of uh, some kind of uh, deal for you. Yeah, for, we want to uh, take care of him. Yeah. Yeah, we really appreciate you guys. So thank Thank you. you. This is excellent. All right, folks. Thanks for tuning in and stay gritty.